I'm gonna be showing you all the ways you can use a cast iron skillet. If you are used to only ever cooking with a stainless steel skillet or a nonstick pan, this is really gonna change the game for you. You're gonna see really awesome color on all the things you cook. They're super heavy duty and sturdy and they conduct heat really evenly and really well. It's the most versatile pan you can own. I'm gonna show you six techniques that every cast iron skillet owner should know. Cast irons are great for searing because they conduct heat really well. The best way to get a good sear on your protein or vegetables with a cast iron is to make sure you have a flat surface. You wanna be able to have lots of flat surface area that can connect with the surface area of your pan. The skillet is being heated over medium high. It's important to let your cast iron skillet preheat for a significant amount of time, longer than you would your nonstick or your stainless steel pan because it takes a little longer because of how thick this cast iron is for it to fully heat up and retain that heat. So I'm gonna add a little bit of oil here. You can see it's really nice and hot. So you know your pan is good to go when your oil is nice and shimmery and when you can see that it runs really easily from side to side. So we're just gonna season our vegetables. And then again, we're making use of this nice flat surface. So you wanna get that right onto the surface of your cast iron. And you can hear that sizzle right away. That's a really good sign. This is vegetable oil, but you can use any type of oil here that has a high smoke point. And then I'm gonna do these onions as well. And then the key here is to not disturb it too much. You wanna give it time to develop that color. It's gonna happen as it connects with the surface of the cast iron. For the carrots, you can see the color changing up the side, which is a good indicator. The more you disturb your vegetables, the more you interrupt that color that's building up where it has contact with the cooking surface. If you imagine trying to get grill marks on a grill, if you move your piece of chicken around too much, you're not gonna get those clean lines. And that's the same thing here. Once the heat is inside of the pan, it like distributes really evenly across the surface. You can really fill the pan from edge to edge and not worry about one part getting super dark and one part being less so. Oh yeah, look at this, really nice. Beautiful char on this onion. Once it hits this like char level that you're interested in, you see kind of like these blisters along the way. So awesome. And something you can only really achieve on a cast iron. Cast irons are great for baking. Again, because of the heat retention are really good for that. And they also just can stand up to really high heats in the oven. So if you are baking something that needs to go really high and you don't wanna use a baking dish and you want this sort of like rusticy round look that a cast iron can provide, it's a really great way to use it. I am rubbing the bottom of this cast iron skillet with butter. And even though the cast iron is seasoned, you definitely want to prevent any stickage here we're gonna do biscuits today, but you can bake lots of different things in a cast iron. You could do a frittata, you could do cinnamon rolls, you could do a crumble or a crisp or a cobbler with those drop biscuity topping. And it's really nice because when you start them kind of like separated out like this, you'll watch them puff up, but keep contained in the circle of the cast iron, which gives it a really nice look at the end. And then just to make sure that they're nicely browned at the finish, we're gonna brush them with a little bit of heavy cream. The other nice part about cast iron as opposed to a dark colored baking dish is that you're gonna get really nice browning on the bottom of your biscuits as well. It'll just really evenly sort of golden brown crisp up the bottom. So it's been 25 to 30 minutes and we are gonna pull our biscuits. Everything rose but stayed in their really nice dome shape. So now you've kind of got that like pull apart bread, slather it with your honey butter. It's really perfect. You've got really great browning on all sides because of these high walls. See all the way down the side, really nicely cooked and then nice crisp brown bottom and then super fluffy where it was connected to its neighbors. We could sear our pork chop if we had a thinner pork chop, but with something thick like this, you wanna start it on the stove so you get that really awesome crust sear on either side and then finish it in the oven so that it cooks all the way through. So I'm heating my cast iron, a little bit of neutral oil in there, and I'm gonna pat my meat dry. What's great about a cast iron skillet here is it transfers to the oven really well. There are some pans that you can't transfer to the oven beyond a certain degree. And you really want one that's gonna retain the heat and really evenly cook your meat. So you get that great sear and you get 
a perfect doneness in the oven. All right, and you can see that oil is nice and hot, spills really easy from side to side. And we're going to press our pork chop into the skillet really firmly so that we have total contact with the edge to this cooked surface. And because we're gonna move this to the oven, you don't have to worry about cooking through here at all. This stage is purely aesthetics. You want that like really awesome golden brown crust. I mean, it's not just aesthetics. It also tastes really great to have that crust, but you don't have to worry about cooking it all the way through. It's not gonna happen. So instead, just worry about the crust, turn it as needed to make sure you get golden brown on all sides, and then let the oven do the hard work. You can tell with this pork chop that the areas that are connected to the bone are a little bit more raised. So it's good to just press down on that area every so often to make sure it's in contact with the pan so it has a better chance of browning evenly as compared to the parts that are closer to the bone. So we're gonna flip this bad boy and you can see this really nice crust, golden brown all along here. Yeah, look at that. So nice, so even. Don't forget two mitts because it's hot on both sides. We're just gonna transfer this straight to the oven. What happened in the oven there basically is we had our really nice sear and now it's perfectly cooked all the way through. It's not overly hammered, which is what would have happened if we cooked it all the way through on the stove. And it has that nice golden brown crust, which it wouldn't have gotten if we cooked it all the way through in the oven. Now we're gonna use our cast iron skillet as an implement for crushing things. This is the first of two of our methods that we're going to cover today that takes advantage of the cast iron's weight and heft. We're not gonna cook with it, we're just using how heavy and sturdy it is. We are gonna use it for peppercorns, really like rock your skillet back and forth to crush your pieces. You can hear it happening underneath there. Just crushes your peppercorns into little smaller broken bits, but not broken down so much that you have ground pepper. You could also use your cast iron as a crushing implement for other things besides spices too. Like if you wanted to make crispy smashed potatoes and you boiled the potatoes and then you wanted to flatten them all, you could use your skillet for that. If you wanted to flatten a piece of protein, there's a lot of things that you can just kind of crush in one fell swoop using the heft of your skillet. This is just a way to make use of a tool that you probably have in your home already. If you don't have a spice mill, don't have a mortar and pestle, this is a great tool to use instead. This is a chicken cutlet, which we pounded earlier, and you could also use the bottom of your cast iron skillet to pound if you wanted. This is a great option of something to shallow fry. Basically, the difference between shallow fry and deep fry is, you guessed it, the depth of the oil. And a shallow fry means that you probably are going to have to flip whatever item is that you're frying, as opposed to dunking it, submerging it all the way in oil as you would with a deep fry. And so that means it's great for things that are thinner, like a chicken or pork cutlet. It's also a little bit more manageable than deep frying if you are a little nervy about a giant vat of oil. So we've been heating this oil over medium and you want it between like 350 to 365. Oh yeah, so nice. Oil can reduce in temperature when you start to add your things to it. So if you want to be frying something at 350, as soon as you add things to it, the oil temperature will reduce. But because the cast iron skillet retains heat so nicely, it will keep that oil at a steady temperature and raise it back up to the temperature that you need it to be all the way through much faster than if you were to use a different vessel. And you see that edge start to go golden brown, you know that's what's happening underneath. Because you're in this pan that's inherently shallower than like a large Dutch oven or a big heavy bottomed pot, you don't wanna fill it all the way to the top with oil. You wanna keep it so that there's enough of this wall here so that any splatters are pretty contained within this pan. Look at that, it's like a giant chicken nugget of your dreams. It's really the oil that's cooking and not the surface area of the pan as opposed to the sear, um, where that is the most important part. So moving it around is okay. Yeah, oh, that looks so good, we love. The other thing you do is immediately after you fry, deep or shallow, is you season because that's gonna make it so that the crispy outer layer will soak that salt up. Can you hear it? Perfectly cooked. And it's got this nice, super crispy coating. Because we had that little layer of oil, we got to cook through this chicken perfectly in rapid time and also managed to get crisp, 
golden brown outside crust. A cast iron, as I have said, is extremely heavy. And that's really useful if you need to smush something down slowly with a lot of weight. We're gonna do that with a panini. And so any sandwich that you want to press, this is a really good method. You can also use the same heft and weight of your pan as a press for things like tofu if you wanted to press all the water out of tofu before you cook it. Or for a non-cooked but pressed sandwich like a muffaletta or like a picnic sandwich that you wanna press before you pack it. All right, this is our stainless steel skillet that we're gonna be pressing our sandwich in and the oil is nice and hot. So we're gonna add our sandwich and now we're gonna add our cast iron as a weight. If you wanted even more weight, you can like put things in your cast iron, but I think this is gonna be good. And so every so often, if you wanna just come over and press this down, make sure it stays evenly on there. What this is doing is sealing all those layers together, helping the cheese to melt and getting a nice crispy edge on the bottom of the bread. If you were just heating the sandwich in the pan without the press, it wouldn't compact in the same way. And that's what we're achieving with this weight. I'm a notorious bad flipper, but this is gonna be fine. And we're just gonna replace the cast iron to evenly weight the other side. I think we might be done here. We're gonna pull our sandwich perfectly flat like a panini, which is exactly what we're after. Oh yeah, look at that, so nice. Now you've got this nice melty sandwich that's pressed to perfection. All the ingredients are nice and melded together and the bread is nice and thin and crisp. I hope you learned a new cast iron trick today. There are a lot of ways to use this versatile tool and you should definitely have one in your kitchen. Are you okay? <laughs>